Normally we don't do a quick change in venue, but in this particular case we decided to do that because Mark can not only talk Army vehicles, but he can talk naval systems. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about what you guys are highlighting and featuring here. Um, you guys are leading naval gun maker around the world, but also you've got your designs, whether it's for new Corvettes, uh, Type 26 model there, as well as uh, the, the new Queen Elizabeth class carrier. Uh, Queen Elizabeth going under sea trials, Prince of Wales, uh, the second ship in the class, uh, just, just named. But talk to us about what you guys are really highlighting and featuring here. So a couple of things. Obviously, the uh, the portfolio of of ships, uh, and certainly the uh, the new Corvette frigate sort of class of vehicle that's um, potentially applicable to a number of opportunities globally. Uh, but what we're really like to highlight is the latest incarnation of the Mark 45 five inch naval gun, uh, which was selected for the Type 26 uh, uh, ship, and uh, uniquely. Uh, for that ship, we're developing an automated ammunition handling system. Uh, it's fully compatible backwards uh, with the Mark 45s that are in a number of fleets around the world, uh, but here specifically to help uh, improve reliability, reduce the manning requirement, uh, and sustain uh, the high rate of fire that the gun's capable of. Um, yeah, because that was a big change for the Royal Navy, which has historically had the 4.5-inch gun as, as, the, as the main battery for, for the surface ships, going up to the 5-inch gun, and this is the standard U.S. Navy destroyer crew des gun. That's correct, and, uh, and so it's uh, compatible with obviously the, the full suite of munitions, but also with, uh, we're highlighting here, the hypervelocity projectile, uh, a next generation of munitions, which uh, would be applicable to five inch, six inch naval guns, as well as electromagnetic rail guns. So uh, one of those very flexible kinds of capabilities that takes us into a whole new application for naval guns. And, and I, I, it was very subtle how you slipped in the Zumwalt six-inch gun uh, right in there with the, with the two, two six-inch. Uh, let me ask you a strategy question because you guys are on the strategy side of things as well. How does budgetary uncertainty, um, especially in the United Kingdom, I mean, you know, UK has committed to a very, very ambitious defense program, year-on-year -year projected increases, but there is a budgetary black hole that has to be reckoned with. Um, does that give any uncertainty uh, for you guys as you do your planning um, because a lot of these systems are you know originating or a lot of the design capacity is originating from the UK and going out into the rest of the world. So budget uncertainty is probably the greatest concern we have about the long term uh, the long term business. Uh, I mean there's always going to be budget the question is, is there budget for those new capabilities? Uh, and how does that compete around the sustainment and maintenance uh, needs for, for the budget? Uh, but I think what we see is a long-term commitment. Uh, and those long-term commitments allow us to manage through what might be year-to-year -year ups and downs of the budget. Uh, and, uh, and the vision for a long-term program like Type 26. Uh, uh, allows us to have confidence in uh, in the investments that we're making. But you are a company that actually has made big investments. You guys won the AMP-V program, for example, because you demonstrated a willingness to invest. Um, you guys are working on gun programs and a whole bunch of other things. You know, on CV90, your made investment to make sure that that product remains viable. Does that, how, how, how much more complicated is the strategic planning process when you're not really sure what some of these markets are going to ultimately look like, including a very important home market for you. And also in the United States, there's some budgetary uncertainty, which we'll talk about a little bit more at AUSA. But, but you know, how, how does that shape how you're making those investment decisions? Well, it, it makes you think really hard. I mean, and it, uh, it limits the number of investments that you make. Um, it tends to have you focus on the large long-term investments uh, where you expect that the returns may be extended, uh, but uh, you have some some confidence. It also makes you think very much about am I making an investment that I can apply across multiple platforms or multiple programs? Uh, and uh, and so it, it has a little bit of a different feel. Uh, investments like Amp V uh, were targeted at a long-term program, not a short-term. Uh, and I think uh, it's changed our internal philosophy, uh, and it's also changed our dialogue with our customer. Uh, where uh, certainly uh, in the U.S., I think in the U.K. very well, uh, it's very much the same. They want to see you demonstrate the capability before they make 
what they would consider to be an even larger investment in, uh, in your future. Mark, always a pleasure. Thanks for seeing you. We look forward to seeing you at AUSA. Right, we look forward to seeing you again, too. Great. Good to see you.